Do you have to get the garbage today, or does it get picked up today? It, I have to take it out. Our garbage used to be Tuesday. Today's the 20th. Wednesday, the 20th. All right, so, yes, George, handouts is where this all is going to go. That's what we're about to mention. Um, don't get confused as to this essay assignment with what our prior obligations already are. Keep in mind tomorrow, Thursday, since today is Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday is when I'm collecting the study guide from you um, for NFS that you were working on in class yesterday. So it was uh, scene 3, 4, Exodus. Remember that was questions 23 to 41. All told, when those get added up, it's a 22-point study guide, so that's a fairly significant assignment that would be coming out. So please make sure you take your study guide home. Worst case scenario, you forget study guide, you don't have notebook, what can you still do? I thought your hand was going up. Well, you could do vocabulary because that's going to be on Friday, which you're going to turn in. Remember, if for some reason, though, you are missing something, go to Google Classroom. Remember, you got the topics there. Oedipus Rex is the second one. For Oedipus, you then have access. There will be a digital copy of the study guide and then also the uh, the text, as long as you're not getting the little spinny thing at the top like we are right now. But I pinky swear that it is there. Maybe it will show up today. So if you do you know, get into a bind like that, um, look for it Google Classroom. Even worst case scenario that that's not working for you, like it's not working right now, shoot me a text on Remind and I can send something your way digitally that you would still be able to do. So um, tomorrow, study guide, questions 23 to 41, and then on uh, Friday is when you would be turning in vocab list number three. There we go. So vocab on Friday. Tomorrow, study guide, vocab Friday. All right, this page that you have, this prompt sheet. Don't get nervous about big essay assignment, when is it due, and all that kind of stuff. Um, this, don't write this down because this isn't 100%. Tentative due date for your whole entire essay is probably going to be October the 3rd. So that's like a Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, I think it's a Tuesday. It's September the 20th. So you're still talking roughly about two weeks away. We're going to be working on the essay in class. Uh, doesn't mean everything's going to get done in class, but you'll have a pretty good amount, pretty fair amount of it done in class that you'll be able to work on. You're also going to be getting constant feedback from me as you go throughout the process. So it's not going to be, here's your essay, work on it for two weeks, turn it in. You will know, you know, starting this Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, any changes, improvements, things like that you need to make. So don't worry about when the entire thing is going to be due. Basically what you have are four different prompts that you can choose from. So you got one, two, three, four. You are going to answer one of those questions. By no means are you going to answer all four or try to do two of them or anything like that. I don't care which one you do. Um, there's not a order of preference from me, and it's not that number one is worth more points than number three or anything like that. All three of them, no matter which one you choose, you are going to have to do some analysis with the play. You're going to have to look things up. You'll be getting your study guide back. That's going to help you locate examples and, and things like that. So number one, you can see a key term that is showing up is going to be dramatic irony, something we've talked about a lot while we've been reading it. Dramatic irony is an important component in Sophocles' plays Oedipus Rex. Explain how Sophocles uses dramatic irony to illustrate Oedipus's lack of wisdom. So if you're answering number one, you are finding examples where the way that Sophocles uses the dramatic irony proves to you that Oedipus lacks wisdom. Doesn't mean that he's dumb or stupid, but that he wasn't wise in some of the decisions that he made. What did, is underneath then for you, where it says dramatic irony illustrates Oedipus' lack of wisdom throughout the play? This is best shown in the following scenes. Those are going to be your thesis and your focus statements for the essay. So if you decide to go with number one, this is going to be your thesis statement that you are going to use, and you would just have to plug in what are the three scenes, the three examples that you're ultimately going to go with. So I'm already explaining how I want you to set this up, and I'll show you in a little bit. There'll be a little bit more detail as to how to set it up, but this would be the sentence that you would use to establish your essay. 
If you go with number two, you're not worried about dramatic irony, but you're worried about a motif. A motif is something that keeps showing up throughout the course of the play, whether it be a book, short story, but for our purposes of play. For this one, you're going to explain how he uses the motif of vision. So this could be the ability to see or the ability not to see in the play to reveal Oedipus's tragic downfall due to his ignorance. So dramatic irony becomes the focal point for number one. If you're going with number two, you're going to be taking a look at vision. Who is probably a character, if you did number two, that you would use some stuff for? Let me do multiple ones. Uh, Oedipus. Oedipus is probably going to be one because of things that happen to him throughout the course of the play. Tiresias, the blind prophet, would probably be somebody who you would use. So depending on which prompt you use, you might kind of come up with a couple different characters that, uh, that you would focus on. Again, I'm giving you the thesis statement, giving you the focus statement. You would use these sentences word for word in your essay. You would just have to put in what your first, your second, and your third example scenes would be. Um, if you go with the third one, Sophocles utilizes symbols throughout the course of his play. Examine how Sophocles' use of symbolism represents humanity's inability to overcome fate. So now you're going with symbols, and instead of looking at ignorance or wisdom and things like that, the inability to overcome fate. Symbolism represents humanity's inability to overcome fate. Your thesis, these examples of symbolism include one, two, and three. Can anyone think of what any symbols would be that you could use in the play? Because now you need specific examples of symbols, something that means one thing, but also has an abstract kind of meaning to it. The shepherd. What about him? Kind of like watched over Oedipus. I think you're going to have a little bit of a tough time getting it beyond little Eddie's a sheep. Well, no, I was just saying, like, just to... Good okay. try. There's one that I think that would kind of relate back to it. Which means... Swollen, swollen foot, swollen ankles, and things like that. So all throughout Oedipus's life, he would have a little bit of a limb. He still kills a lot of people for, you know, looping around. Um, you know, Casta never asks him, hey, how'd you get the limp? He never really wondered, why is my name Oedipus after my swollen feet? So his name could certainly be a symbol that you could use. And that's what I was thinking, kind of going back to Shepard, since he's the one who found, finds him bound up. The roads. The, the, roads. the crossroads. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be one. So we have um, Oedipus's name, the crossroads. And, you know, certainly we use that term, you know, you're coming to a crossroads in your life where you need to make a decision. Oedipus made the wrong decision. Um, and then what about another one, which I would say would be kind of similar to an earlier prompt that we had. If you recognize something, you should be able to... Can't use the same word. I recognize that Zach is sitting there because I can see you. Blindness or sight can certainly be a symbol throughout the course of, of the play as well. So, you know, blindness might be one that you would look at. I think those are probably your three most clear-cut examples of, of symbolism that you would work. So if you went with number three, the big thing is you have to explain how those symbols tie in to our inability to overcome fate, or at least what the Greeks would have believed, the inability to overcome fate. And then last one, number four, um, similes, metaphors, and personification occur throughout the play, Oedipus Rex. Demonstrate how these types of figurative language help Sophocles highlight Oedipus's hubris. Anyone remember what hubris means? We used that term early on in our notes when we were first introducing this like three, four weeks ago. If you are hubris, and Oedipus is, what would be like a character trait of his that, that we maybe mention? Sure, okay. Could be like an A term. A-R. Arrogance, yep. 
So you could think, how does this highlight Oedipus's arrogance throughout the course of the play? If you went with number four, and again, I don't care which one you go with, my guess is that I think number four would be the one that people might find to be the most difficult because you need to find exam specific examples of a simile, a metaphor, an example of personification that is going to highlight his arrogance. So that one is probably a little more exact than maybe what some of the other ones were. Especially, I would say, the dramatic irony of the motif. You probably got a little bit of wiggle room in the different things that you could use. You choose one of those four. It makes no difference to me which one you go with. You might not be ready to choose one of those four right now at this moment. Um, my hope is on Friday we begin writing this. So by Friday you would want to know what it's going to be and you're going to have some ideas for yourself about this. Any specific questions about any of those four prompts? Today's a day to ask questions. If you get concerned, confused, right? Anything else? What's up? Nope. Doesn't show up too well down here. At the bottom of your page, it's 100 points. I hope not a zero. If you flip your rubric over or on the back, this is the rubric that ultimately gets utilized for. Okay? So you can see what the breakdown is going to be. Like so for the first part, formatting, MLA format. As long as you have a double space, Times New Roman. Uh, a works cited page, all that kind of stuff, you get a five point. Um, Tommy, with you asking about points, when you see an arrow like this, it simply means either you are getting yourself a five or that five is going to turn into a zero. So if you make a mistake so far as the formatting, it's all or nothing. Now it's not a zero for the whole entire assignment, but it goes from five for the formatting um, to a zero. That should not be a problem. Let's see if this is working. For the simple fact, and we'll take a look at this tomorrow when we get laptops, on Google Classroom, I've already posted the Oedipus Rex essay assignment. So there's a digital copy of this thing that you can look at. There's a thing down here where it says Oedipus Rex template. Each one of you already have a digital copy of this that is in your Google Drive, and it's probably going to kind of putz along for us, where I already have the spacing set up, I have the font set up, I have the last name, page number thing set up, so you just have to kind of go in and fill in the blanks where your formatting should be picture perfect. Um, the works cited page is not on there yet, we're going to do that together because you don't have the textbook in front of you that that whole thing came from. But that overall formatting, which apparently we're not getting anything with today, um, shouldn't be a problem for you because you have your own one set up. What that also means is as you type stuff, which I guess we're not going to be doing right now, I get a copy of it as well. I have access to Tommy's, I have access to George's, I have access to Matt's rough draft. So as you type each paragraph, I'm going to go in and put comments. So if I see you headed down the wrong direction, I'll let you know about it. If I see something that you're doing very well, I like the way that Ben has set up his paragraph, I can let him know about that so that you know whether to make a change in the next paragraph or to keep doing what you're doing. But you're not going to turn in a rough draft of an essay where I don't have the time to look at it. Every day I'm going to go back to your paragraph and put in comments so you're constantly getting feedback as to what's working and what's not. So by the time you get to the third body paragraph, you've already had me give you three different days worth of feedback so that you know things are going in, in a good direction or not. Okay. Um, but organization, we'll talk about that kind of stuff as we go through. Um, your introduction, you have to have all these parts to it. You'll either get 10 points, 5 points, or 0. The descriptive details, the content, like the explanation, this is really where you end up making your points because you're either going to go from a 45% down to something that would be less than a 30. Um, I can put other numbers in here. So it's not that you'll get a 45 or a 40 or a 38 or a 36. Uh, if it looks like, you know, you have a 39 um, so far as the value, I can give you other numbers besides just those ones that are posted. But if you have a zero or if it simply says or like it does for the introduction, those would be the three options that would be available for you. So if you do have mistakes with your incorporation of direct quotations, 
you make the same mistake twice, you can lose a point, lose a point, and you get an 8 out of 10. The reason I would be picky about that, if you have a mistake in your first body paragraph, who's going to let you know about it before you get to your second one? I will because I'll be giving you feedback on your Google Doc. So if you have an issue, you know, something with mechanics, something with spelling, something with quotes, not enough detail, I will have let you have known about it before you submit that final copy. And then the same thing when it gets down to our process uh, materials and all that kind of stuff. So everything on here you should certainly be well aware of before we end up uh, getting too far with it. Any concerns about anything? Just depending on how it's going in. I do. All right, on your line paper, up at the top, um, essay structure. What I want to do for today, because this is something that we use throughout the course of the year, I want to simply let you know how all your essays are, are going to be set up. your umbrella. Easy points. What's your first paragraph going to be? Too bad you're not getting points, but well done. And I realize you have written essays before. I'm not trying to make it sound like you have never written an essay before, and you should thank Mr. Kane for introducing the concept of the introduction to you. Elena, your essays are going to be so much better now that you know this. That's not the case, but I want to make sure you're pretty clear as to what the expectations are that would be in each part of the introduction. Um, what would be some things, you know, based on just stuff you already know, previous teachers that you've had, that you need to have within your introduction? doesn't have to be necessarily in order, but what would be some stuff? Ben? A hook? And different people will call it different things. Could be a hook. Some people call it an intention grabber. Uh, don't write it down yet. Wait till we get everything on here, and then you can make sure you have it in the right order. Logan, did he steal your answer? No. That's good. Um, like what the topics are going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I call that, I don't know, because I know we had different teachers last year, I call that the focus statement. And again, don't write this yet, because it's not in the right order. But in there, yes, you're mentioning what your topics are going to be. Jillian? Thesis, that's the big one. Luke, did she take your answer? Oh, that's okay. There's like two more things I put in. And at this point, the order would be hook, add a couple things, and then it would go thesis, and then it would go focus statement. Um, hopefully an easy question. What's your essay about? can never go wrong with stuff. Um, essay is going to be about Oedipus Rex. So your hook, your attention grabber is not going to be about Oedipus Rex. So you need a transition sentence that is going to bring in the work and the author. Since I then introduced the work, what do I need to provide? very briefly about the play that we're going to be giving you. Just a little bit of, yeah, like background, summary background. I'm going to put of the work or text just because it's not always going to be a play. For our purposes, it will be. So there are one, two, three, 
four, five things that are going to get included within your introduction. Hook or attention grabber, transition sentence, background of the worker text, thesis, focus statement. Ben, not trying to put you on the spot since you mentioned hook. What's the whole purpose of the hook? Okay, grab the reader's attention. There's a couple different ways that people will do this. Sometimes folks will ask the question, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be blind? Some of you might have. Personally, I haven't really thought about it. Don't ask a rhetorical question. Some people might use a famous quote, and you can look up quotes, and sometimes that can work. Uh, but don't feel like you have to use a quote just because that's what you're supposed to do. While it's called a hook or an attention grabber, I would kind of think of it as a way that you are trying to establish the relevance of the topic. If you are writing about prompt number one, what's the main topic that you're going to write about? And it's not dramatic irony. What's the main issue that you would write about prompt number one? Not irony, but we're going to try. You can be smart, but you can also not be wise. Sure. And you can also like not be, I would say, IQ book smart, but still be wise. Yeah, um, and, and there's not, I'm not, and there's not going to be one uh, word that, or definition we have to come to agreement with. You could say maybe wisdom is the ability to choose between like right and wrong. Um, you could say that it is the ability to make, you know, simply like correct decisions. Wisdom is certainly something, If again, if you're going with prompt number one, that you could introduce. You're not mentioning Oedipus yet, but you'd be introducing wisdom. If you were doing prompt number two, you would take a look at ignorance, not knowing something, lack of knowledge. If you were doing three, you'd be talking about fate. If you're doing number four, you'd be talking about hubris or arrogance. So all you're doing is establishing the importance of that issue, making some kind of commentary about it. What you then go into your next sentence is Sophocles' play, Oedipus Rex, explores the idea of wisdom, fate, hubris, ignorance, whatever issue you end up going with. So your hook, your attention grabber, about how many sentences is it going to be, do you think? Three. One. That might be a little long. Five. Um, no. For your attention grabber, most of us, you're probably looking at least one to two sentences. You're going to have a one sentence transition statement where you bring in the work and the author. Background of the work, you just give a summary, a quick little summary of what's happening. You're probably looking in the ballpark of two to three sentences. Thesis statement, that's going to be one sentence. Where are you getting your thesis statement from? That sheet that you already have, your focus statement you have on that sheet right there. So bare minimum, one, two, three, four, six sentences, maybe two, three, five, six, seven sentences. You could, you know, but you will understand how your introduction then gets kind of set up with that uh, breakdown of it. Any introduction that we really do throughout the course of the year, you're going to have all that stuff in it. The biggest complaint that people have when it comes to essays is, I don't know what to write, or I don't know how many sentences you want, or what do you want to have in there. This is the stuff that would be in here. And again, just like Luke said, number four and five, thesis and focus statement, all that stuff's right here. The very first sentence is your thesis. The second sentence, then, is your focus that's mentioning those subtopics. So it's pretty straight and forward in that way. If you have three subtopics, how many body paragraphs are you going to have? Three. Okay. For um, your body paragraphs, we're just going to write this one time, but it's understood that it would get repeated multiple times.
body paragraphs, knowing that this is going to happen a grand total of three times. Just like we were saying before for introduction, what do you need to have in a body paragraph? It's not a thesis, but it's still a T word, not a thesis sentence. There is transition. Transition word is the first word of your other T sentence. State. Topic sentence. So if I'm doing dramatic irony, I'm going to mention that initially Oedipus Rex uses dramatic irony when Tiresias talks to Oedipus, you know, or something like that. So I would be mentioning in here um, what my, uh, my overall argument is going to be, dealing with the arrogance, dealing with the wisdom, and I'll let us know what the scene is going to be. In the outline that I'm giving you, I'm already giving you transition words that you can use. If you want to switch them, you can. There is, however, a word that I don't want you to use for your first body paragraph. Any idea? For a transition. First. And then please don't use second. And please don't use third. We already survived seventh grade. We don't need to go back there. Uh, so the transition words that I gave, that I will give to you, is initially, next, finally. If you want to change them a little bit or tweak them a little bit, you certainly can. But just stay away from first, second, and third. Yeah, that worked. What was the first one that you said? Did you say first? Yeah. Don't use first. First, second, third. No. You can go initially. To begin. Something like that will be fine. Hence. Therefore. Hence? Yeah. Is that first or last? Hence, me, hence kind of like is a therefore or as a result. One time that you certainly could use hence or therefore as a result if you're going to have a topic sentence, you also are going to kind of have at the very end a closing sentence, closing statement where you like reinforce your main idea. So after doing all of this, you might go, hence, Oedipus's conversation with Tiresias is an example of dramatic irony that proves his lack of wisdom, you know, kind of thing. So that's when you could have like a hence, a therefore, something like that. What do you got to do in the middle? Oh, yeah. Back to your answer. Stuff. Jesus. Examples. Not in this one. Uh, so you have to specifically provide a direct quotation from the text. So that's not the second. No, it'll be the third. And if I'm doing a direct quotation, what am I going to have in parentheses after that direct quotation? I'm going to have a citation. And again, we'll talk about what has to go in that citation. Is that the second thing? No, it's actually going to be the third. One, three, five. So we got two and four. Citations for plays actually aren't that bad um, because you're just putting scenes and line numbers. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not, that, it's not that bad. Or at least I don't view it as being that bad. There we go. If I give a direct quotation, so say I'm doing prompt number one, I have to give you an example of dramatic irony. What do I have to explain about that dramatic irony? Why is dramatic irony? And how it also proves Oedipus's not bait for this one, but lack of wisdom. So after the direct quotation, I have to do my explanation and everyone's favorite A word in English class, analysis. That's the big thing. Analysis. Explanation and analysis. You only have to have one direct quotation for each body paragraph. It's not that you're going to have three, four, or anything like that. Just a thumbs up. In between the two, 
I want you to introduce slash paraphrase your example. So if I were doing dramatic irony, and I said, hey, maybe my first example is going to be Oedipus' conversation with Tiresias. So transition sentence and topic sentence. Initially, Oedipus' lack of wisdom um, occurs in scene one when he is speaking with Tiresias. Introduce, paraphrase the example. Why is Oedipus talking to Tiresias? What's he trying to find out? Oedipus is trying to get to the bottom of the mystery as to who killed Laius. Tiresias is a prophet slash soothsayer who supposedly has the ability to talk to the gods. Tiresias warns Oedipus about his own possible involvement. Then I do my quotation, my example. Then I provide my explanation as to how is there dramatic irony in this and how does it tie back to his overall lack of wisdom. So when you take a look at it from, again, that sentence standpoint, transition and topic sentence, you're looking at one sentence. If I'm doing the introduce, paraphrase the example, most people are going to be in that two to three. The direct quotation, depends how long you're going with a quotation, probably one to two. Here's the big thing. With that explanation and analysis, I should be able to get four sentences out of that part, and then I have a closing statement. So bare minimum, one sentence, total of three sentences, four sentences, eight sentences, nine sentences would be happening with each body paragraph. We were big boy pants now. Yeah. And big girl pants. Not old people pants, because that's like depends. We don't we don't need that. Now if, Mr. Kane, I, I, I can't write four sentences about, about that example. I hate to tell you, what's my answer going to be to that? Find a new example. Yeah, find a different example. Um, and really what you're doing is you're just explaining the whole thought process going on in your head. What is it about that example that makes a dramatic irony or what motif, you know, whatever you're looking at, what is it about that example that proves Oedipus' lack of wisdom? It's a rationale, it's an explanation that's going to be going in your head. My guess, and Tommy, I'll get to you in a second. My guess is this is the part that people, I don't want to say struggle with, but you'll have to spend the most time with. The way that our rough draft works is I think we're going to start on Friday. By the end of class on Friday, you have to have your introductory paragraph done. You get four points if you have that paragraph done. Whether it's good or bad, you have it done, you get four points. On Monday of next week, you have to have your first body paragraph done. You have that, you get four points. So your whole rough draft is going to be worth... 20 points because you get four points per paragraph. Over the weekend, I'm going to look at all your introductory paragraphs, give you feedback. Monday, I'm going to look at all your body paragraph, number one, give you feedback, let you know what's good, let you know where you need to improve so that you can apply that. Where folks might run into trouble on Monday is if you haven't decided what your example is, you certainly haven't decided how you're going to be able to explain it. So you don't have homework to type in class, to type, because you're going to do that in class, but basically your daily homework is come in knowing what it is that you are going to write. You have your own paper copies of the play. I would highlight, circle, annotate, mark, whatever, so that I know I'm writing about this on Monday, and I know I'm writing about this on Tuesday. And really, for Friday, you should know what your uh, all three examples are going to be, because I'm going to have to include those in my focus statement. Tommy, you had a question, then Logan, come to you. Um, well, I'm starting with Tommy first. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, since the, the quotation is one of the indicating analysis of the quotation. No, there's no relationship. You mean like if I have a one sentence? Well, in... In those four sentences, the one part I'm going to have to certainly explain is why is it dramatic irony? And then the part that's going to be a little bit more difficult is explaining how it proves his lack of wisdom. If we were to say, you know, why is Mr. Kane not wise? You can't go, he's dumb, and leave it at that. 
How do you know it's not wives? Well, you have to make a, a, an explanation. On the day that it was 32 degrees outside, he wore shorts, swim trunks, sandals, period. Any regular person who had at least a little bit of wisdom would realize they should be wearing boots, long pants, a coat. Since he's wearing the wrong clothes, now one of my other sentences, it's clear that he's not wise in this situation. So the explanation, yeah, that first time around with body paragraph one, it could be a little rough. Just because you have to get, you know, kind of used to it. Um, if you only have, let's say, two sentences, I'll certainly let you know. I'll give you an explanation of maybe how that could be a little bit lengthier. And then the idea is when you do this the, third the second time, the third time, you're better equipped to do it. I think once the, the worst day for writing your rough draft is body paragraph number one, because that's the most stuff happening. Once you start doing it the second time, the third time for that body paragraph, because you're going to repeat the same format, it's not near as big of a, of a deal. Um, and see if this is working yet. There it is. All of you are, have a copy of this. So, like, literally, Tommy, when you get the body paragraph number one, topic sentence, initially, I've told you what to do. Support detail number one, recall the incident in your own words. For example, when Oedipus talks to Tiresias, and then it's explaining, here's your quote, and then do your details in four to five sentences. So you would know how many sentences you're at because you're just going to fill out this whole form. And then that's going to change itself into the essay. So there's no reason that you should be missing anything within your introduction because all the sentences are there for you to explain what it is you need to do. And then we'll just put it all into paragraph form. Last paragraph that you're going to do clearly is going to be the conclusion. Um, and basically you are just going to reword your thesis statement and then give a quick little summary of body paragraph number one, body paragraph two, body paragraph number three, and then you give your clincher, which is going to go back to that original concept that you were presenting. Tomorrow, we're going to get laptops. Uh, I'm going to show you how this is set up, how it works. We're going to put together our work cited pages through NoodleBib. Um, most of you have used NoodleBib before last year. Uh, if not, we'll get you all set up, so it's not going to be a problem. An easy enough thing to do. It's helpful. So that when you come in then on Friday and we go, okay, introductions go, you know exactly what it is that you need to do. So then guy tomorrow.